All right. Welcome back, everyone. Um, this is our third session about the Enneagram. And I just want to welcome all of our many, many, many viewers. Um, from all around the world today. So um, just welcoming you back as we talk about the second Enneagram type today. And just so you know, you can take the Enneagram test. The link is under the description below the YouTube video. And also the notes in the fill in the blank notes are below there as well. So you can get both. If you just click on those links, you can take the test and you can... Um, and see the notes that we have prepared for this session. So today we're going to talk about the second Enneagram type, which is called the helper. And um, Jason's going to come up in a little bit and talk about John and how John is the Bible character that um, falls under the helper. And then the Bible reference today is going to be Mark 10:45. The Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve. And our purpose today is to better understand the helper and its strengths, weaknesses, and communication styles. So the second uh, Enneagram type is called the helper. And they are described as relational, generous, insecure, and self unaware. So obviously, as we've kind of talked about before, there are strengths and weaknesses um, to each Enneagram type, and the helpers are the ones that are going to be serving. They are the ones who want to make sure that they are there for you in your time of need. They are the people that want to bring food or visit people at the hospital or um, just be available to kind of help you in whatever you need. Also, kind of like what we talked about with the reformers, being good people to have during um, this kind of coronavirus, helpers are also very good to have because they will um, drop everything to try to help and um, to serve you during that time. So definitely the positives of that are they're very relational. They... Um, oftentimes really care about the person and care about um, understanding them and people, they have like a gift of making people feel super special, like that they're like the most important person in the room and they are great at just building that relationships with other people. Um, and they're also very generous, either generous with their time or generous with their um, skills or abilities. They want for, um, to help people and use what they, their skills in order to do that. But sometimes kind of the negatives of that is they can be a little bit insecure, especially if people don't need their help. Sometimes... Um, if they don't, they don't feel needed, then they do not feel like they have a purpose or they do not feel like they have value. And so they, um, a helper can often kind of feel insecure if in a relationship or in some sort of um, kind of relationship thing that they are not needed or um, that they don't have anything to offer, then they really struggle in that relationship. And sometimes um, they can just kind of be a little bit self-unaware. They uh, don't realize maybe when people are feeling a little bit smothered or kind of some of the other kind of boundary issues. Sometimes I think twos can really struggle with some boundaries because they so badly want to help. They'll say yes to everything and um, kind of have a hard time setting some like clear boundaries. Um, the besetting sin, remember the besetting sin is just a constant um, problem or constant sin, and oftentimes that sin can be pride because the helper so badly wants to help, and they have these skills, and they have these things that they really want um, to give and to help people, but they it can kind of internalize as pride. Say, I can do this, I can save the day, I can um, do all of these things to fix it. And oftentimes they kind of can put it on themselves that they can do it and then that kind of leads into pride. 
But the underlying emotion is shame. And like when they cannot save the day or they cannot help somebody or they don't know what to do or they don't have the answer to the problem, then they really struggle with shame. Like, I should be able to do this. I should be able to serve. I should be able to help. And then they internalize that into shame and feel um, unworthy and unwanted. So twos often believe that they must be helping and caring. In all situations, they really want to help and they really want to care. And they found that, find their purpose, they find their value, they find their kind of worth, self-worth through that. So the positives of that is they want to help and they care about people. But also kind of the downfall of that is that they often put a lot on themselves to carry, that they need to fix the problems, they need to serve. And uh, they often can kind of carry a lot for themselves. And they also do want the recognition sometimes that they are serving. And so sometimes it's not done necessarily with a, like um, an unselfish heart. So. It's hard because, you know, both sometimes they do really serve and they don't want to be known as being selfish, but they also do want that recognition. So I think as we kind of were talking about before, there's both strengths and weaknesses. And one of the weaknesses is that they want people to know that what they are doing and they want to feel that purpose and they want to feel that um, joy in helping each other. When they're at their best, they definitely do a great job of serving and caring for other people. So Jason's going to come up now and talk about um, John and how he is the Bible character that represents this. Thank you, Kristen. Um, yeah, John, John really does... Um, really does teach us a lot about about twos and the fact that they are natural givers. Uh, but another thing that, that he teaches us is that perhaps at times they struggle to receive, uh, both from uh, neighbors or friends or even from God himself. Um, twos are so keenly aware of everyone else's needs that they sometimes forget about their own. And, and we can see this, we can see this in John and in his writings, not, not just um, in, the, in the gospel, but also in his, in his other writings. We can see this in John's, in John's life. Uh, Richard Rohr points out that, that John, uh, he is the, the disciple that was at the cross, right? When, when Jesus died, the only one that was there. And so we see this, this love uh, for, for Jesus that followed him all the way to the cross, even when others deserted him. And that was John's heart. Uh, but one thing that we don't find in, in John's gospel is like this, this idea of loving your enemies that is talked about in the other gospel. John, John doesn't write these kind of thoughts in his. So you can see sort of the good and the bad or the, the good and the ugly of, of a two in their, in their personality. Uh, they can sometimes be possessive and exclusive. Um, twos... All of us need to remember this, right? And all of these things that we'll talk about, you might see a little bit of yourself in. That's because, uh, remember, we're sort of a combination of all of these things because God is the perfection of all these personalities. Uh, but, but twos especially need to remember that Jesus' grace is sufficient. Like, it's enough. They don't have to prove themselves by, by serving and by doing. Jesus' grace is truly sufficient. It's, a, it's enough. Uh, twos many times want to see themselves in terms of loving or, or serving other people. Life is all about being generous and meeting the needs of, of others. But remember, His grace, not these things that we do, is truly sufficient uh, for us. Um, now, here, here's some spiritual spiritual strengths of a two. Uh, of course, 
Twos are great, usually at hospitality and, and service. Um, they feel most alive when they make space and seize opportunities to, uh, to welcome welcome others or to show love or to be a blessing uh, to others. And, and this, this comes so naturally to them, like they're great hosts uh, because they, they just love serving, serving others so well. Um, spiritual, spiritual friendship uh, is something that, that comes naturally to most, to most twos. Um, they, they tend to be energized by deep friendship and sharing their life with others. And certainly we see this in John's dynamic with, with Jesus. Um, they are very intentional and self-giving in their, in their friendships. Um, but but here's, here's some spiritual challenges of, of a two. Uh, twos might find it hard at times to have focused, uh, focused prayer times. Uh, the, kind of, the kind of prayer that invites us to just slow down and to be still uh, before God without that need to just do something. Um, finding that, that posture of Mary that's sitting at the feet of Jesus, just focusing on Jesus and, and Him while, uh, while, while the two might want to be in that posture of Martha, away serving in the, in the kitchen or away serving somewhere else, uh, twos have to maybe pull themselves away from that and make time to be intentional in their focused time of prayer like, like Mary was. Um, twos, twos at their worst, right? Um, twos at their worst. Uh, can be, can be uh, self-serving and manipulative. Like we can, we can see that maybe, maybe a two begins to take their identity from the things that they do, uh, from the way that they serve. And so for perhaps they can, they can sort of evolve from serving with this, this pure heart to this idea, if I will serve others, People will be grateful and expect, or, or, or will express that gratefulness to me. And in that expression that they give to me, I find my fulfillment. Uh, so, so their gifting of helping can, can sort of become self-serving where they, they thrive off of the, the gratitude uh, that, they, that they receive from that. Um, but twos at their best are some, some amazing, amazing people. Uh, because at their best, twos are deeply unselfish. Uh, they're immensely humble. And, and they have this ability to give unconditional love uh, to others in a way that, that perhaps no other personality type does. Um, a key Bible verse that, that twos should remember is Mark 10.45. The Son of Man didn't come uh, to be served but to serve. Uh, so, so we are so grateful for twos who, who are the embodiment of that. They understand that as well as anyone. Uh, they're extraordinary and, and just warm, generous, self-sacrificing people. Um, now, in these days that, that we're in right now with the coronavirus and the um, uh, social distancing and, and people that are uh, having to, to, to be isolated, um, this is a time that twos shine, but this is also a time where if you have a two in your life, uh, make sure that you're praying for them and lifting them up because Many times they're wanting to serve and because there's no outlet and no way for them to serve, uh, it, it becomes a, a situation like this becomes very, very difficult for them because they feel like there's nothing I can do and it breaks their heart. And so make sure that you're uh, lifting up your, your twos in prayer and uh, when there is those opportunities that you allow them that opportunity to serve because they want to so bad. Well, let me pray with you uh, as we close out this time together today. God, we love you and we thank you so much. As Mark reminded us, Lord, you gave us the ultimate example of what a two is when you said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. 
And uh, Lord, I pray that all of us uh, would find ourselves growing more into the kind of servant you are. You are. But I pray especially for the twos out there that are helpers by nature. I just pray that you would strengthen them in every way uh, and let them, Father, be, be people who are functioning at their best, resisting the temptations that might, that might come and make them uh, uh, find, find satisfaction in what they do rather than who you are. I pray, Lord, that, uh, that they would resist that temptation their, their identity would be in you, and their service would be from a heart of true love for others. We love you, and we thank you for this in your name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.